program created by Rio Grande. Los Angeles County Sheriff's Office calling all cars. Attention all sheriff's cars. Broadcast 205 regarding a murder in Leona Canyon. No information available as to suspect in this case. That's all. Rosenquist. recommendations from reliable sources. He analyzes the sales stories on gasoline, for example, and discards the weak need generalities claimed for many brands. He wants to know who are the best authorities on gasoline, who are its largest users, and he must know whether their use of that product is the same as his. There is no other testing ground to compare with the 55 million miles driven by emergency equipment that exclusively uses Rio Grande cracked gasoline. That's driving like you do, only harder. It's starting, stopping, slow, long miles of economical cruising, acceleration, pickup, speeding. It's everything you expect from a car and a gasoline. Over 30 of your cities and counties have selected Rio Grande cracked gasoline over all other brands. More police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and other emergency equipment use Rio Grande cracked gasoline wherever it is sold than any other brand. Rio Grande sales show that motorists have accepted Rio Grande's invitation to buy as the strongest, most sincere, and convincing proof of a superior gasoline. Police car performance with Rio Grande cracked is an established fact. Get it in your car at your Rio Grande dealers tomorrow. Happy to have present again at the Calling All Cars broadcast a representative from the Sheriff's Office of Los Angeles County, under whose jurisdiction tonight's case was solved. We present Captain A.C. Jewell. Occasionally a crime is committed that proves most baffling to officers assigned to investigate it. Such is the case you are to hear tonight. With the most meager clues which to work, the officers who solved this case prepared such a complete file of evidence that both defendants were caught and brought to trial in record time. We are proud of the efficiency of our department of the work that the men of the sheriff's office do. We are glad to be a part of the vast machinery that makes it its business to see that criminals are brought to justice and are made to see that crime does not pay. In a little house in Leona Canyon, two men stand staring at the body of a man. Five minutes before he had been alive, now his life blood staining the white scrub floor, he lay dead, murdered. No, kill him. Shut up, you fool. What are we going to do? Get him out of here. No, no, I won't touch him. You want a dose of this yourself? Come on, take his head. Bloody. What do you expect? You didn't say you were going to kill him. Ah, stop squawking. Get hold of him. Put some steam in it, stupid. Do a little work yourself. Watch it, you're spilling the money out of his pocket. <laughs> well, pick it up. Hey, we'll get it later. Come on, let's pitch him in the well. On the morning of May 18th, Tenant Farmer Juan Eratucho and a companion make their way along the winding road leading to the cabin of Theodore Wallman. I hear old man Wallman had a little trouble with Daniels. Oh, see, si, this McDaniels, he always passes over Wallman's land when he goes to his rancho. How else could he get there? Quien sabe. Just the same, abuelo no like it. How come you always call the old man abuelo? Oh, he's a fine old man. He like father to me. But I told to be a son, so I call him grandfather. What does he say to that? Oh, he laughs. I don't see the old man around anywhere. Oh, he sits by the fire on chilly morning. He ought to be out and around by this time, though. Maybe, I think so. We're going to see, eh? Madre 
misericordioso. Oh, there's a saint. What? What has happened? There's been a man killed in here. Sangre de mi madre. Mr. Warman! Oh, Mr. Warman! He, he's not here. Where could he be? He's bound to be here somewhere. Look. Look, somebody dragged something through the yard. Yes, it, it leads toward the well. Let's look. There, there's blood on the ground. And on the side of the well. We'll have to move these boxes. Maybe they hid him in there. <laughs> Yours, Mio. That's, that's old man Warman down there. Dead. Let's go get the constable. No, we better call the sheriff. All right, but let's do it. Who found the body? I, senor. Uh, we found it, senor McPhillips and myself. Uh, we got it out of the well. Did you touch anything? Only the body, senor. Well, we might as well go inside. See. Who was the man? His name was Wallman. Have any enemies? Oh, si, senor. Many, I think. Who in particular? Only one I know for sure is McDaniels. Well, who is McDaniels? Uh, he's a fellow who owned the land on the other side of this rancho. Ever have any trouble with Wallman? Oh, si, si, many times. What about? Well, it's uh, Daniels or McDaniels. Always he have to go across uh, Senor Walmer's rancho to get to his house. That caused the trouble. I see. Trespass, huh? See? Well, where does this uh, McDaniels live? Oh, he no live. He died last month. Oh, for the love of Mike. Say, what's the idea of telling me all this about him having trouble with the old man, then? Well, if uh, Daniel, uh, he have a wife. Also, he have brother-in-law. Are they dead, too? Oh, no, Senor. They live in Los Angeles. Well, just how did this Daniels happen to fight with the old man? Well, senor, uh, one day, this Daniels, he come to the rancho, and he start across the road, and, uh... Senor Wallman. Thank you. Get off my property. Ah, oh, what's eating you, you old fossil? Who's bothering your property anyhow? Can't hurt none to walk across it. Look here, young fella. Don't you get up with me, or I'll have the law on you. I've had enough of this. I'm getting fed up with your griping about trespass every time I have to walk across your cow blame old cow pasture. Now go on, get the law. You'd have a dozen laws if you want to. I'm going to walk through here when I get gas darn good and ready. Over my dead body you are, my granny. Maybe that can be arranged, too. Oh, so you're threatening me now, are you? Sure I'm threatening you, you persimmon-eating old toad. You've been threatening me ever since I've been living here. I'm getting fed up with it. I'm warning you. The next time you make a crack at me, you'd better be prepared to back it up. I'm prepared to back it up right now. Then you better start doing it. Come down off that porch and square up. Wait, you, you old fool! Take that Take that. You, you're too old. Here, abuelo, hey, what's the matter here? Senor Daniels, what you do? Ah, yeah, this old fogey started a row again about my passing through his land. Uh, darn right I did. I mean it too. You keep off my property. Oh, abuelo, abuelo. Don't, don't get excited. Senor Daniels is giving me no harm. Just you? the same. I don't want him around here. Now get you. All right. I'm going. But I'll be back. When I do, I'll settle with you once and for all. I'm ready for you any time. No, 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 no. Wait, wait a minute, abuelo. Remember, Senor Daniels, he has a weak heart. I'll say he has. And it's yellow besides. I'll teach him a lesson. That's the last time Senor Daniels was over here. Well, I'll make a note of that. Anybody else around here who had trouble with him? Oh, lots of people, Senor. He had many enemies. You know any of them? Well, there is his son, the oldest one. He has a deed to this place. Maybe Where he... Where is he? He operates a rancho. Okay, I'll see about him later. Anybody else? Well, he has a nephew who lives down in the valley. The nephew owes him lots of money. That's so? See? Well, I'll look this place over. Go out and tell those two deputies I want to see them, will you? See, senor. Want to see us, Chief? Yes. What have you found out? Seems the old man used to sell cigars and cigarettes and farm produce to the neighbors. Had a little trouble with a fellow named McDaniel. I know about that. What else? Yeah, we've checked up on most of his neighbors, and they seem to have a lot of trouble with most of them. Well, that makes it complicated, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, Hunter, you better stick around here and help me. Hanby, you go out and pick up the son and the nephew for questioning. Check with the coroner on the condition of the body and come back here when you get through. Okay, Chief. 
Where'd you get that silver dollar, Chief? Hmm? Oh, oh, I, I picked it up here on the floor. Oh, by the way, Handy, yeah? you better take this with you and get a report on it. There's a bloody thumbprint on here. It might prove valuable. Oh, yeah, sure. Well, Hunter, let's see what we can find. Here's a baby that did the work. Steel drill, huh? Yeah. A couple of socks for that would finish almost any man. Looks like the killer came back and cleaned the place up. Cleaned it out. It'd be better. Looking for money, apparently. Sure did a good job of ransacking the place. Well, it looks like the old man was sitting here getting ready to eat when the murderer hit him. There's enough blood around here. I'll see. And you better get some scrapings. May need them for comparisons later. Yeah, here's a scrap of paper. Looks like it is torn off from a larger piece. Let's see that. Probably part of a wad used to scrub up the blood. Hmm. Queer wrinkles in it, huh? Yeah, I wonder what they were used for. Hunter, I've got it. What? Why, this piece of paper may be the answer to this case. How? Never mind, but I'll bet my bottom dollar that the killer wears glasses. <laughs> that makes it simple. Simpler than you think. There couldn't have been many persons acquainted with Wallman's habits well enough to know or believe that he had a lot of money. Assuming that the motive was robbery. Well, that should be obvious from the way this place is torn up. Anyway, it ought to be easy to find out how many of his neighbors wore glasses. Well, what makes you think it's a neighbor? Whoever did this was familiar with Wallman's habits and with the place. This was a well-planned murder. The officers made a thorough search of the house without uncovering further clues of value. Late that night, Wright, Hunter, and Hanley meet for a conference. Well, what did you boys find out? Uh, it looks like a murder for revenge to me. Uh, the old man was killed with that drill, apparently. Struck three times. I checked all of McDaniel's relatives, and none of them wear glasses. The undertaker told me he saw two men in a Ford truck headed toward the ranch. Yeah? He passed them as he was taking the body into Lancaster. They uh, slowed down and looked back, and one of them had on glasses. Did he know either of them? No, but I checked up with some of the people living around here, and there have been two men seen in the canyon from time to time who answered those descriptions. Anybody know who they are? One of them is a partner of this fellow McDaniel's. The one who dropped dead last month just after he had that trouble with Warman, you know. I see. Well, who was the other one? McDaniel's brother-in-law. Uh-huh. Now we're getting somewhere. I checked on the McDaniel story. Apparently another of many rows the old man had with uh, people who crossed his land. He wouldn't let them build a road through his property and was always kicking about trespass and things like that. Did uh, Wallman have enough trouble with anybody to make them sore enough to do this job? I don't think so. Well, it looks like to me is that these two young fellows decided the old man had a little money and made up their minds to get it, that's all. Yeah, that's the way it looked to me, too. Assuming that they were are the ones who did the job. Well, I'm going back out there in the morning and look the place over again. You better mm -hmm. stick around and check up on those fingerprints we picked up. Okay. <laughs> Deputy Bright drove to the ranch, musing as he drove. This might be robbery. Yes, might be revenge. Oh, but you can't pick up a guy just because he wears glasses. I've got one clear thumbprint. He had enemies. No money. May have been trying to make him tell where the money was. I got a hunch they'll come back. Bright drove on to the ranch, and as he drove into the Woolman yard, he saw two women wandering about the place. He parked, and the women approached. Senor, have you seen Mr. Adams? Why, no. Who's Mr. Adams? Oh, he lives here. We just drove out from the town to get the furniture. Furniture? See. Si. Oh, yes, yes, the furniture, sure. We thought we'd better come out and look at it first before we bought it. He said he belonged to a relative of his, uh, an uncle, I think it was. Are you sure this is the right place? Oh, sure, senor. We saw the name on the mailbox. It was the name that he told to us. What name was it? Uh, Mr. Wallman. Uh, that was him. Did Adam say he'd be out today? Si, si, senor. He said that he would be out to stack the furniture this evening. But still, we thought we'd look at it first. After all, we don't want to buy a pig in a sack. No, that wouldn't be a very good idea. I don't like to wait in here much longer, though. Well, uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll be around here for a while. Mr. Adams shows up, I'll tell him that you were here. I will give you my name and address, senor. And you can give it to him if he comes while you are here. That'll be fine. Just write on this card, will you? Gracias, senor. 
Victoria Gonzalez, Street, Los Angeles. Oh, there you are. This is Victoria Gonzalez, Utah Street, Los Angeles. Well, Mrs. Gonzalez, I'll be here for some time. Mr. Adams comes, I'll give him your message. Gracias again, senor. Leaning over the door of the woman's truck before he had gotten underway, Bright ascertained that the address he had given him was authentic. He copied the license number of the truck. Then as she drove away, the deputy drove his own car into the now empty garage and waited. An hour passed. Then, through a crack in the garage door, Bright saw a car approach. Slow down. Then continued slowly past the woman's face. Farther up the road, it turned around. And came back. Swung into the yard. And with motor running, came to a stop. Two men sat in the car. Both were young, dark, and one wore shell-rimmed glasses. Bright saw them gaze suspiciously at the fresh tracks his car had made when he drove it into Woman's garage. Their black eyes bored piercingly into the gloom where the officer waited. One man turned and whispered to his companion. With a cry of complaining gears, the car got underway, shot into the road, and gained speed. Bright swung open the garage door and dashed gun in hand after the fleeing pair. Hey, stop! Stop! Ah, oh, nuts. Okay, monkeys, stay where you are. Hey, you, come back here. All right, come on. I'll take you in anyway. We'll get your buddy later. What is it, senor? What are you arresting me for? Suspicion of murder at the moment. We'll find some more charges later. Oh, no, 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 no senor. I did not do it. Willie, he Who's also... Willie? Well, he's the man who ran away. He did it. Oh, yeah? Well, we'll find out about that. I didn't do it. He did it. What's your name? Alfonso Rincon. Who's the other fellow? Willie Adam. Okay, Rincon. I'll just handcuff you to the car till I can get to a telephone, then we'll pick up Mr. Adams. Within half an hour, a posse of deputy sheriffs from the precinct station, augmented by neighbors armed with shotguns, clubs, or rifles, had taken the trail of the fugitive. At dusk, they found him cowering in a box canyon, arms caught above his head as the posse approached. Adams and Rincon were taken to headquarters for questions. What's your full name? Willie Adams. Sure it isn't William Granado? Sometimes. You know a man named Warman? Yeah. How long have you known him? Mm, two years, maybe two and a half. Ever have any trouble with him? No, I never had any trouble with him. Where do you live? On her ranch. By her, you mean Mrs. McDaniels here? Yeah. Do you know anything about her husband? Well, she told me he died. I don't know. You don't know whether he did. No, I don't. Did uh, Mr. McDaniels ever have any trouble with Warman? I think they had trouble. Same trouble all the time. Did you see Mrs. McDaniels on Sunday, the day that Warman died? Yeah, about one o'clock. Where? At the ranch. She was with that fellow, Vic Lund. Who else was with her? I don't know. Any other man? I don't know. Was uh, anybody up there with you? Well, Fancho, her brother, he was with me. How did Mrs. McDaniels get to the ranch? She drove up. Alone? No, uh, that other fellow, Lund, he was with her. What was said to you by either of them? Mm -hmm. He said, don't say nothing about it. Just give me the money and keep quiet. Don't say nothing about any trouble. How did you happen to go to Walman's place? Mm -hmm. Those fellows. Uh, Alfonso and Lund, uh, and she, uh, uh, wanted to talk to him, so we all went up there. Walman, he wanted to say something... They didn't say nothing. They hit him over the head. They killed him. Who hit it? Alfonso. Then what did they do? They picked up the money and put, it, and put him in the well. Did you pick up any money? No. You didn't pick up this silver dollar? No. I never picked up anything. Oh. How much did you get? About six dollars, I think it was. And some pennies. Now tell me, uh, then what did Alfonso do? He said, I'm going to give you some money. Don't say nothing about this business. Alfonso killed him. Well, uh, what did you do after you killed this man? I never killed him. They did. Oh, yes. You said that before, didn't you? Well, uh, what did they do with him? They put him in the well. They piled the boards and boxes up on it. 
What was Mrs. McDaniels doing all this time? Just watching from the auto down by the barn. Are you absolutely sure she was there? Oh, sure. Are you sure Lund was there? Sure, he was there. Are you absolutely sure Alfonso killed Waldman? Yes, sir, Alfonso killed him. Is this the picture of the man who killed Waldman? Yeah, yeah, that's Alfonso. He did it. Is Alfonso this woman's brother? Yeah. Did she tell you she wanted this man killed? Yes. How many times did Alfonso hit him? Three times. I think. You think? Yeah. Amby, take Adams in the other room and bring in Lund. Okay. Come on, Adams. Huh? Captain Black wants to see you. Yeah, sure. Come in, Lund. Sit down. Thank you. Lund, do you know Alfonso Rincon? Yeah, a little bit. He worked around the paper office on Fridays and Saturdays and Saturday nights. Did you see him Saturday? No, I seen him uh, Sunday night, though. Where was this? Uh, at the home of his sister, Mrs. McDaniel. How did you happen to be there? Oh, I had just returned from uh, San Diego with her little boy. Uh, it took him down there with me on Saturday. You weren't at the ranch Sunday? No, I was not at the ranch. Oh, Hanby. Yeah. Bring Adams back in here. Okay. Sit down, Adams. Mm. Now, when did you say you saw this man, Lund? I saw him Sunday at the ranch. Whereabouts on the ranch? In the kitchen of Wallman's house. Did he pick up the money that fell out of Wallman's pocket? Yes. Lund, where were you Sunday? I told you I was in San Diego visiting my brother-in-law. Where else did you go? Uh, we went over to Tijuana. I left San Diego about uh, 4.30 in the afternoon and uh, got back here about 9 or 9.30 Sunday night. Anybody with you? Yeah, uh, Mrs. McDaniel's little boy, Robert. He was with me. Call him in, Henry. Hi, Keith. Hey, come in a minute, will you, Robert? Sure. Robert, how old are you? Eleven. You go to school? Yes, sir. I'm in the A-5. A-5, huh? That's great. Robert, do you know this man, Lund? Sure. I went to San Diego with him Saturday. What time did you leave? Twenty minutes after twelve. How do you know? Well, he was supposed to be there at twelve fifteen. He was late, so I looked at the clock when he did come. What time did you get to San Diego? About five o'clock. How do you know that? There was a clock in the car. Did you stay in San Diego overnight? Yes, sir. I stayed at Mr. Lund's sister's house. Anybody else there? Sure. Mr. Lund and his sister's husband and Emmeline and Helen. Mr. Lund's their uncle. We had a party of cake and ice cream. What time did you leave? Sunday afternoon, about 4.30. And you got home when? About 9.30. You looked at the clock again, did you? Yes, sir. That's all, Robert. Thank you, sir. Mrs. McDaniels, you've been pretty quiet during all this. Suppose you tell us about this trip you made to the ranch. I didn't make any trip to the ranch. No? No. I spent Saturday afternoon at the hospital with my other boy. Mr. Lund had taken Robert to San Diego with him. When I got home, my brother was gone. He had told me that this Adams here wanted him to go to the ranch with him. When he came in Sunday night, I heard him go upstairs. I went to his room, and he told me this fellow Adams had killed a man. Did he say who was killed? Yes, this man, Wallman. Who did he say was there when the killing took place? He didn't say. He didn't mention anyone else. Did he say who killed him? No. He didn't make any explanation. Did he say anything about Vic Lund being there? No. Mr. Lund was in San Diego. Well, Mrs. McDaniels, you've listened to this man's story, this Adams here. How does his story jive? It's nothing but lies. It lies from start to finish. My brother did go up there with him. That's true. But when he says Vic was there, he's lying. And if he says I was there, he's lying. You know it, too, don't you, Adams? You know you're a liar. And nothing but a stool pigeon and a crook, and you know it. You're trying to hide behind a pack of lies about somebody else. No, I'm not lying. I tell you the truth. Oh, Adams. Hmm. You see this coat? Yes. That's Wallman's coat. I found it in your room. No. You see these clothes? We fixed them out of the well on the ranch where you live. They're not mine. Oh, yes, they are. You see this dollar bill with a blood spot on it? I took that from your pocket when you were brought in here. It's not mine. I got it from Alfonso. You see this silver dollar? It's got your thumbprint on it. Well, he killed him. I picked up the money. Adams, where are your glasses? I lost them. No, you didn't. You left them in this coat. Wallman's coat that you wore away from Wallman's house. There are specimens of blood in the rims around the lenses. I didn't do it. You see this little scrap of paper? That's a piece of paper you used to wipe off your glasses, isn't it? Yes. Uh, you used to wipe the blood off your glasses because you were standing behind Wellman when he was killed, weren't you? Yes. Then he was struck from behind. All right, Adam, start telling the truth. Who picked up the money? He did. You didn't pick it up? No, no, he did. Alfonso did. Then you killed him. Yes. With this bar. Yes. 
Okay, Adams. Let's hear your story. Yeah. Went over to the house. It's about two thirty Sunday. Alfonso went in the house. I went to the back door. I need some cigarettes. I got no cigarettes. I only got some between the act cigars. Little one. It'll be all right. Give me a packet. Who's that? Who are you? Get out of here. Where's your money? What money? I ain't got no money. I I I, I Shut up. I, Where's I, that money? I tell you I ain't got no no. Shut up, you fool. What the... We're going to do? You want to talk of this yourself? Get hold of him and stop squawking. You've got to get him out of here. Thus, with cold-blooded bluntness, Willie Adams confessed the murder of Theodore Walton. In just a moment, we'll hear again from Captain Jewell. To continue our story about the American consumers being an increasingly careful and intelligent buyer, we refer again to the fact that he wants to know who are the authorities and most important users of a product. This time we're talking about Sinclair motor oil. Sinclair writes the laws of lubrication, and eight major airlines, 150 railroads, great fleets of ships, and millions of motorists in 45 nations of the world depend upon Sinclair oil to protect the billions of dollars invested in their motor equipment. There are a dozen important reasons why you should use Sinclair oils in your motor, but this one is certainly sufficient. Most of the oils you buy contain petroleum jelly, which turns into a thin, detrimental liquid in your motor. The patented Sinclair refining process completely removes petroleum jelly from Sinclair oils. Don't gamble with incompletely refined oils when Sinclair Opaline is only 25 cents a quart in tamper-proof cans. And follow the lead of those who know the most about gasoline. Get Rio Grande cracked. This quicker starting, faster accelerating, longer mileage gasoline will give you a new conception of performance. Get police car performance with Rio Grande cracked gasoline at your independent Rio Grande dealers tomorrow. And now, Captain Jewell. The perfect investigative work done by Captain Bright, deputies Handley and Hunter, and other officers who worked on the case, proved beyond a shadow of doubt that Willie Adams had killed Elman, that Rincon had been accomplished. These men were brought to trial and convicted of first-degree murder without recommendation. Their crime definitely failed to pay. Thank you, Captain Jewell. Sheriff's Office calling all cars. Attention all sheriff's cars. A cancellation of broadcast 205 regarding a murder in Leona Canyon. Suspects in this case are now in custody. And that's all. Rose and Quinn. Frederick Lindsley, bidding you good night for Rio Grande.